time now for our Living and Practicing by Design segment, sponsored by Dr. John Hayes. For a better experience at the doctor's office, try Dr. John Hayes' new, highly personalized and affordable direct primary care practice. Find out more at drjohnhayesjr.com, drjohnhayesjr.com. And Dr. John Hayes is off this week, but we do have a... uh, a guest host filling in for Dr. John Hayes. And this week, it's Julia Swartz, L-I-C-S-W. And Julia Swartz is with us today. And, uh, in fact, Dr. John Hayes introduced to uh, you to us not too long ago. Julia, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here on WATD. All right, so we are going to talk uh, the discussion. We always have a new topic every week. Is called Medication Assisted uh, Weight Loss is mm. the uh, title of the blog. Very in right now. Yes. Hot topic right now. Very hot topic. Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, there is a lot about all these kind of things. Or It's, you know, it oscillates because on one side people are like, oh, wow, we found the cure for obesity, which is obviously a huge issue. And on the other end, um, there does seem to be some controversy around it. Hmm. All right. Yes. Well, I guess you can hopefully uh, try to break this down for us here. So what, what should we be uh, thinking about, uh, Julia? Sure. So I think we all know that obesity is a problem in the United States and has been for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this new class of drugs has come up in an effort to assist and help people with that. Mm -hmm. Um, While it does have some side effects, right, it does put people at risk um, for uh, side effects like gastroparesis, which is a slowing down of the GI tract. Um, I think that the medications look like they can actually be quite hopeful for a lot of folks. And I think what's important is that we work with our healthcare providers Mm -hmm. to look at our specific health issues and be really clear about how this may or may not work and also be reporting any side effects. Right. Um, I think that most people are asking questions about this, about folks who aren't specialized. And Mm. I think that's the important thing, right? We want to speak with a practice where this is their area of expertise, endocrinologists, folks who really know about this medication. I think one of the risks is that it's available online. Correct. And then also, I think bouncing off of that, people are saying kind of avoid, I mean, I don't want to throw any businesses under the bus, but someone who's just, you know, a storefront and says they're like a wellness spa, maybe they're not the best people to go for these type of injection drugs, you know, if I'm going to call it frankly. What do you think of that? So you saying like, how does someone differentiate between a credible source for this? Yeah, I really think that this falls under endocrinology, uh-huh. right? Okay. So you want to make sure that the person that you're working with has a background in endocrinology. Okay. That, I think, is really, really important. Um, also, health spars may not take the health history. Mm-hmm. They may not do the labs that need to be done, stool analysis, hair analysis, the kinds of things that take a deep dive into the differences in these medications mm-hmm. and how to prescribe them because they're not a one-size-fits-all. It isn't about what's available. It's about... What is your constitution and how does that work? And I think the other piece of it is also working with a practice that has a behavioral health component, Mm. right? Because as we talked about last time, Mm -hmm. lots of people use food to cope. Emotionally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. There's this whole emotional eating piece to it. And so if you don't have that piece of the puzzle, you're going to miss out. Rebound. Right. You you may have great success with resolving some of your health issues um, in addition to the weight loss. However, when you stop the medication, if you haven't looked at the things behind why you're emotionally eating, um, just like gastric bypass surgery, although we don't have as much data with this as we do with that, we found that five years out, 60 percent of people gained all the weight back. Right. Yeah, no. if they're in therapy, it helped a lot to keep those numbers down. Exactly. Yeah, it's the root of the issue, really. What yeah. is the uh, what do these medications do then? Do they make you not feel hungry, or what? What is pretty much? You would that... know. Yeah, you know the scientific way. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I don't. I mean, because obviously, I, I see the advertisements, but I, I didn't know what was behind. Yeah, it I mean, or... everybody says it turns off the food noise, which you mentioned in your blog. Yeah, but I don't understand. So, right. what yeah, does that I exactly explain mean? it because you know, if I if I see you know somebody baking a you know. Chocolate 
chocolate chip cookies, do I not? <laughs> what about the smell and all of that that right. goes along with that? Does it, does it block any of that? or is it- Yeah. So what some people actually report is that they stop taking the medication because they lose their joy of food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are some people that will, will say there's actually been several articles that I've written about that people who recognize that they use food to cope and they stopped because that was their go-to and they didn't have anything to replace it with. Mm. There are also people who have lost a significant amount of weight and because they didn't deal with their internal issues, their body had changed, but oh. the internal workings of their sense of self and their yeah. relationship to other people and so forth. Body dysmorphia. Yeah, didn't mm-hmm. really get addressed. Yeah. So it does quiet that food chatter, mm-hmm. um, which is the the noise in our head and our mind that says, go eat when I'm not hungry. Mm. And as we've talked about last time, um, many of the food products that are on the market, right, are hijacked, are, are hijacking our brain in order to make us think and feel that we're hungry when we're not, right? Yeah. They turn on our ghrelin, which is the hormone that says I'm hungry, and they turn off our leptin, which is the hormone that says I'm full stop eating. Yeah. Um, and there's been, you know, a lot of research around this. Michael Moss wrote a book called uh, Salt, Sugar, Fat around okay. how the food industry has kind of manipulated that. Right. So I think it's important to really look at the big picture mm-hmm. yeah. around this issue. It isn't just about kind of a quick fix. I think it's about lifestyle and exercise and sleep and yeah. mental health and putting all of the supports in place and making sure that the resources that you're looking for these medications have all of those components in there. Yeah, yeah. working what you create as a healthy plan, pretty much. Exactly. Because, yeah. mm-hmm. exactly. I, 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 I mean, it, I suppose just with everything in life, people wish that, that you could just take a, a, a pill or, or an injection, I guess, and just have everything take care of it. Somehow, Correct. Without doing the other work. Yes, right. definitely. Yeah. But they're saying the most successful people, they prioritize lean protein, veggies, fruits, and they also, I mean, they say it's important to work out if you are on these types of medications yeah. because you could lose a lot of muscle mass. Correct. So oh, that's okay. why there are practices that actually um, do a form of scanning where they look at your muscle mass compared to fat. Mm-hmm. So they're monitoring that as you're losing the weight. Oh, and, that's so smart. Yes. And making accommodations around you need to build muscle mass as well, because the more muscle mass we have, the more calories we burn at rest. Mm. It just takes our body more um, energy in order to do that. Right. So all of those components are super important. And there are people who will say in my food and mood group, right, I hate to exercise. I don't want to exercise. Yeah. So we look at functional things that you can do, right? Walking. Vacuuming your living room. Totally. Right? Gardening. Gardening. All of those things. Things that you enjoy. If you have a pet, you know. Take them for a walk, mm-hmm. right? I'm a firm believer in do what you enjoy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Swimming. Mowing the lawn. Yeah, well, and the absolutely. lawn's great. Absolutely. Yeah, Rob just lit up. He's like, great, my <laughs> exercise. I've always wondered, because you hear food noise, food noise, food noise, like, what? what is, like, what's an example of food noise? Because last night when I, while I was falling asleep, I was thinking about what I was going to make for dinner today. Is that oh. an example of food noise? Oh, wow. Uh, or, like, food noise is like, what am I going to eat next? What am I going to eat next? Like, I never, I, I don't know what that means, really. Yeah, it, it could be that, but it's also that sort of knee-jerk reaction to, I'm stressed, I'm upset, something horrible happened, I want ice cream. Okay. I need a hot dog. I want some french fries, mm-hmm. right? It's that, that impulse, what I guess we would call a craving, Yeah. Right? That we feel ourselves reaching for food in Comforting. difficult, emotional, stressful situations, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So... What I'm going to cook for dinner tonight could be planning, Mm -hmm. right? Could be just, hmm, what do I need to do? And a a big part of this lifestyle change is planning. Right. We have to grocery shop. We have to meal plan. We need to cook. Prioritize working out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to build those lifestyle changes in as well so that we're really mindful about preparing meals for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because if we live that high-stressed life... We're going to yeah. drive through. We're going to grab the thing. We're going to we're going to set ourselves up to fail because right. we don't have. Going what am I going to cook tomorrow? Mm-hmm. Do store. I have the ingredients that I need? When you're hungry, yeah. or you've had a bad day, and you go to the grocery store, and then I, I always 
I always go by, and I still I still look at the little little section. They have like an end cap that has like Twinkies and things. Oh on yeah, there. little treats. Susie Q's and all these other oh, things. Yeah. That I, I can't have devil dogs. Oh boy, I want me some. Uh, <laughs> could really go for some funny bones, but yeah, I know. But so no, I, those I, are I, good examples of foods. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. there's nothing really good in there though. Right, that yeah. have <laughs> that have been created so that you want them, yeah. and then you want more of them, yeah. right? They do. They're small and easy to yep. just grab them. Yep. Come yeah. in little packages. They're inexpensive. Can yeah. bring them with the, you throughout your day. Yeah. French Whatever fries stresses seem to be you. in that category. We love our French mm-hmm. fries. Yeah, easy food is usually not the best, except like maybe an apple. Well, yeah, that's know? what I was saying. Nobody goes right. through a drive-through to get an apple. You know, right? You just, well, you, and that's why <laughs> those wish. things have failed, right? Yeah. So yeah. some fast food chains have tried those things, and they fail because that's not where people go to get those things. Right. No. It's mostly like in the little kids' meals. They give, yeah. like, apple oh, slices. Christine is finishing her apple right now in the newsroom. Oh, good for you, Christine. <laughs> and Christine, yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I really enjoyed yeah. reading your blog. I also, I, I think this is very interesting. I think it has a lot of potential for the future. I think it's definitely going to change the way that obesity is in the U.S. Also, there's, like, so such high rates of obesity in England as well i didn't know that um so i think it's becoming more so like a worldwide problem but i i read this whole thread that um it's actually becoming beneficial for people who suffer from arthritis because these injectable drugs just reduce inflammation all over your body i don't know if you what, have heard about that the weight too. loss drugs do is that a side effect or um well basically it like brings down all the inflammation in your body i mean you would know more so it's actually oh. benefiting people with pcos and um, arthritis they've seen a lot of advantages with arthritis especially so there seems to be a lot of benefits that we're still discovering yeah so these things are correlated right if we're eating those kinds of foods the western diet and the more mm-hmm. that the western diet travels throughout the world the more we see these issues, right? Mm -hmm. So as people start to make these lifestyle changes and they eat cleaner, in addition to the weight loss, that's reducing inflammation. So it's both pieces of it. Mm -hmm. There also seems to be some um, early research that it might work well um, with addictions. Right. Because if it's quieting the food chatter in our brain, right, about food that people people are addicted to, it might be um, helpful. This is very early um, with addictions. And so I think there is um, a place for these medications in the world, and they do look like they're going to be promising. But again, we need to be really careful and mindful about where we get these medications, who we get them from, and the whole lifestyle change piece that comes with it. Right. So as I wrote in the blog, right, we need to build in those coping skills that we want to put into place, right? So we talked about, like, effective communication, people who avoid communicating with people because their assumption is that it's going to be a confrontation. Mm. So a lot of the folks that join my food and mood group are self-described people pleasers, Mm. right? So if you're a people pleaser, it's going to be hard for you to advocate for yourself, set limits, have positive communications. So we focus on that as a skill. We also bring in that cognitive behavioral therapy model, right, which is how our thoughts Thoughts affect our mood and how our mood affects our behavior. We have lots of food, lots of thoughts about food, mm-hmm. right? We have lots of thoughts and assumptions from as simple as what am I going to eat for mm-hmm. dinner tomorrow There's night? There's a lot of food going, yeah. It's always, it's always we part need it of to survive. thinking about that, yeah. We do. Yeah, we do. We need uh, to survive. Medication Assisted Weight Loss is the name of the blog. You can go read it, drjohnhayesjr.com, uh, written by Julia Schwartz, who's been with us today. Let's mend our relationship with food. Julia Swartz, you can find out more at drjohnhayesjr.com and read the full blog. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. It was so interesting. You. Thanks. Oh, and by, by the way, what is uh, for dinner tonight? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, I like, made, I grilled steak yesterday, but I burnt it. Oops. So I was trying to think of making it better. So I was going to make like tacos with low carb shells. Okay. There you go. I love it. Salad was but I was tips. thinking about the tacos last night in bed. <laughs> and I was like, is that food noise? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Tacos. All right. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye-bye. And uh, Julia's in for Dr. John Hayes. He'll joins us every Thursday right at 922.